Hey everyone and welcome back to the Warcraft News, this time a massive one because we are on the cusp of one of the most exciting World of Warcraft events, well, pretty much ever. And this excitement has clearly been felt by Blizzard who have now had so many players that they're being forced to open even more new servers. But before we get onto that, we're doing our own classic celebration as a part of our complete history of World of Warcraft series. We just dropped a new episode of that yesterday, so be sure to check it out. And we're also running a special bonus for this month's Patreon. You'll get these two gorgeous landscapes in addition to the usual monthly set. It'll all arrive in one of these guys for 25 bucks, nice and simple, lots of content, our biggest month yet, and it's sure to turn our office into quite the mailroom. Okay, with that, let's get going. So, Classic seems to be even more popular than Blizzard anticipated. Well, either that or maybe, if we're going to tinfoil hat here, maybe they purposely launched the name creation with a lowball number of servers in order to A, have a good news story as they opened up more, or more reasonably B, to manage the new rollout of servers in line with player interest. But I think one thing's pretty darn clear. Players are interested. Blizzard have warned players about playing on high or full servers, saying that the likes of Shazrath EU, my server of choice, are expected to have queues of over 10,000 players. And even with layering, that is a hell of a lot of people, surely enough to give us five hour queues, maybe 10 hour queues, which, come to think of it, is pretty in line with the vanilla experience. So to keep on top of this, Blizz are adding new servers. They announced that on the 26th of August, they are going to be adding Incendious PvP, Bigglesworth PvP, Old Blanche Normal and Westfall Normal for the US, and then Flamelash PvP, Gambling PvP, Morgrain PvP, Netherguard Keep Normal, and Razorgore PvP for the EU. EU definitely getting the more metal-sounding server names, and uh, yeah, a lot of PvP servers. And hey, I suppose if history tells us anything, it probably is that us Euros really do like fighting each other, and WoW is no different, but jokes aside, it's interesting that the European uh, servers are getting more of a PvP focus. At least in the live game, it always seemed like EU was more PvE, while the US is more PvP focused, but uh, hey, I suppose that just won't be applying for Classic. I actually have absolutely no idea why there is so much more PvP interest in the EU, but hey, there you have it. Now, of course, they're not the only servers that Blizzard are adding. Last week, they added a few to both regions, and early this week, they added even more. Blizzard have also announced that character creation will be far more open on the 26th, allowing players to cap their accounts with 10 characters per realm and a maximum of 50. And I've got to wonder, is this another big test? You know, their sort of last test, letting them know quickly how many servers they'll need to spin up once Classic launches. Of course, there's far more Classic to talk about, so let's cover the team Q&A. They said that they've got plans to bring up more realms if needed, and that character transfers, including free ones, are being considered to manage populations, and that full servers are, yes, going to have several hours of queue times. Now, this is all super relevant to layering, which they say is decently fixed for your character, with your layer only changing if you join something or someone, and uh, your layer actually persisting a little post-logout in order to prevent people from just logging in and out to switch layers. Now, layering seems to be far from ideal, even in their opinion, and their overall goal, they say, is zero layering on any server by phase two. Overall, they want to keep the realm and login caps to be reasonable and then balance things out with layering, and it's seems like the idea is that over time, the initial hype players will drop off, leaving the servers with their more stable populations. Now, look, in my view, this is a reasonable fix to a very tough problem, and I think they're making the right call here. Now, past that, they clarified some details, but interestingly, they said that getting 1.12 working meant that, say, moving on, well, means that moving on to, say, TBC would be a lot easier, that the real legwork is done. Although they did say that, you know, things like moving on to TBC, that would just be something that they would evaluate later on. Next, though, we've got a fairly major drama that happened, one that actually brings up a very interesting difference between Classic and Vanilla, and it's actually an example where Blizzard may feel compelled to make Classic different to Vanilla in order to preserve the spirit of Vanilla in Classic. Classic LFG is an add-on that made waves. It essentially was a text parser that would see LFG posts and then bring them into a system that resembled the modern group finder, and it could even do this by uh, using secret chat channels. Now, I've seen many people defending it just saying, hey, it's a text parser, so it just gives you a better UI but I think that's uh, being willfully ignorant. After all, software used in, say, financial markets to catch illicit trades, well, in a lot of ways, that's just a very fast text parser, and I know because I made one of them a few years, uh, years ago for a uni project. So, parsing text, that's just the means by which it works. That's just the back end. The problem is the actual system and how it works. Now, here's the thing. There were some similar add-ons back in the day, like Call to Arms. They weren't that widely used in comparison, though, and they weren't really part of the game culturally, and that's what brings us on to a bit of a wider issue here. You see, 
Add-on development has came on so much further since Classic. Right, back in Classic, people were not at all using the tools available to them maximally. Yes, they used add-ons, but the add-ons were not as advanced. In 2019, we've got a decade and a half of WoW add-on development experience, meaning that even with a limited WoW add-on API, far, far more can be done. LVUI, we can do that. Azeroth Autopilot, we can do that. Weak Auras, we've got that in Classic. And thanks to this increased expertise, Classic players are going to have access to far more robust add-ons than they did back in the day. And look, it's not just the tactical side of things, what we can do technically, it's also cultural. Using add-ons was normal, yes, for the higher end of WoW players during vanilla, but uh, there were less add-ons, it was less ubiquitous than it is today. Back then, you didn't have add-on managers that would make it all easy for you, you had to download them, manually install them, then the game would update, and all your add-ons would break, and you have to spend a day fixing your UI. That stuff's just not a concern anymore. It was a lot more work back then, and less people did it. But today, the add-on experience is the default, and this is going to profoundly change classic. Things like what you can track in weak ores, even just having a slick UI through Elv, all of these things will make the classic experience different to vanilla, even if the games are the same. Now, look, things like Elv, etc., Blizzard should not shut those things down, absolutely not. Add-ons were a part of the vanilla experience after all, and it would have just been a matter of time before better ones emerged, but say, classic LFG, that might have actually created quite a problem. And because of this, Blizzard have decided to update the API effectively breaking it, and here's what they said. Ultimately, if a streamlined group finding system was something we considered compatible with Classic, we would have kept the modern pre-made group finder tool rather than choosing to remove it from the Classic client. It's difficult to articulate a clear-cut line for exactly when an add-on crosses the line, however, when an add-on goes beyond presenting information or providing aesthetic customization and attempts to create an interconnected social network that relies on other players also using the same add-on, we are likely to scrutinize it particularly closely. And as you can see, yeah, they're really committed to the spirit of Classic there, as they outlined in BlizzCon 2018. Now, how will they actually implement this? Well, the add-on is a chat parser, effectively, and how its, you know, its fundamentals work, so I expect they'll limit something there. Now, the downside is that other add-ons could be hit, and I think that would be really sad, especially, say, some of the role-playing add-ons that really do add a lot of richness to the role-playing experience. I think that not having Classic LFG is a good thing for Classic, but I hope Blizzard can be surgical in how they do this and allow things like, uh, say, TRP3, to exist, sort of undamaged from this. And then next, we've got the method race to Classic World first, and this one's kind of interesting. I've actually seen some kickback, people saying that, well, the original race happened ages ago, and playing the super hardcore modern WoW way of doing things, that's just not classic. And I understand those, uh, you know, I understand those things, but ultimately I think this. Method is, yes, it's an esports team, it's also a media organization, and this is absolutely something they're going to do. It's going to be wildly successful. And here's the thing, this will be especially fun for players who cannot play Classic, and there are loads of people for whom Classic just doesn't make sense in terms of the time requirements. I'm going to be playing it when I can, but I know that's not going to be a massive number of hours because I don't have that much free time. I still really want to play it, but for a lot of other people, maybe if they've got a full-time job and kids, the most they'll be able to get for Classic is a few hours a week. So, watching something like this while they do other things could be really good for Classic awareness. I think this is something that will dominate Twitch. I think it's something that will perform really, really quite well indeed, and uh, yeah, we could see WoW at the very top of Twitch, which certainly would be a nice thing, much like how Dazara Lore, Nighthold, and Old Deer were pretty darn good for World of Warcraft as races, I think this will be as well. The only difference is, I think this will be larger than any of them, and uh, I think it will create a really, really big event that will reverberate far past the current World of Warcraft player base. I think this will really be good for getting new people in, so I think it's going to be really good for Method, really good for Blizzard, and mostly pretty good for the classic players. Although that said, there's also the topic of streamer servers, and yeah, I will admit if I say there was one server that um, all of the people in Twitch were on, that is personally a server I would avoid like the plague because I don't want to be caught up in those stream dynamics as a part of my classic experience. Like, I'm going to be playing classic uh, when I can, it's going to be on Shazrath EU, but the thing is, I, I mean, I don't really want to do big stream events, I'm not a streamer, I'm a YouTuber, and for me, playing that is more just playing with my friends from the Preach community rather than playing it as a thing for work. I never want to, vanilla uh, actually playing it to be that, so um, I can totally understand why people are skeptical 
receptacle of the streamer servers. And uh, I mean, I suppose I do agree because the big streamer servers with super big events, that's really something that would be a turnoff to me and uh, is not really what I want from the vanilla, you know, from the classic experience. But then ultimately one thing I would say is that classic is being played by WoW players of today. And WoW players are a group who optimize a lot and they try hard. So even with this whole method thing, Classic was never going to have the same rating experience as Vanilla. I think everyone knows that. We've got so many more tools, so many more add-ons. People are smarter, better at the game. And uh, look, we also are dealing with 1.12 systems, not 1.11 systems, or sorry, 1.1 systems, which, uh, yeah, had a bit more jank and were actually pretty different. But anyway, with that cover, let's move on to some live updates. Not much has happened with live, given all the Classic news, although Blizzard did confirm that Artifact Power will continue until October 1st. Now, I'd be kind of worried here that this would bump 8.2.5 to being in October, because if it's October, then 8.3, realistically, it's it's probably going to be the start of January. And if that's the case, I really see it to be quite hard for them to actually hit an August, uh, you know, release date for the next expansion. Maybe it would bump that expansion back to September, October, or November, like we saw with Mop, Kata, and, uh, and Wrath. And if that is the case, then yeah, I think the live team would actually be pretty behind on schedule and that uh, would make me kind of sad. Uh, here's the thing, I'm wondering, you know, how much does Classic doing well, how much does that make the live team feel like they've got a little bit more slack in their dates? Now, for me, the thing is, 8.2 was really in the right direction by quite some margin, far better game than uh, 8.0 and 8.1. And that means that 8.3 is probably going to be a really good patch. Um, but just that wait for it, I think, would be kind of unfortunate, and if we are waiting so much longer for the next World of Warcraft expansion, uh, yeah, that would be pretty unfortunate, especially because I think that's the WoW expansion that uh, really has a lot riding on it. I mean, we pretty much say this every two expansions. They seem to do a Legion and then, you know, do a, you know, do a BFA. They do a mop. They do a wad. That seems to be kind of how it goes. Um, and even if that very depressing cycle is the case, then uh, I suppose, hey, the next expansion could be the legion to our current wad but uh, yeah basically i'm a little bit worried about them slipping from the schedule but uh, we'll just have to wait and see i'm sure this blizzcon will be a very revealing event indeed but anyway that's it for me apologies for the lighter than normal edit for today's video connell is in away for the next few days so um, i'm editing this one myself and i've also got a deadline for doing my accounts and if i don't do those before classic i won't hit the deadline and uh, it will be very bad if my accounts weren't done because uh, well you know you got to do your accounts or else very bad things happen so i'm going to go do that after editing this video and uh, yeah thank you very much for watching if you'd like to support what we are doing you can check out the patron and then of course be sure to check out the complete history of world of warcraft a new series that we will be running for quite some time indeed thank you very much for watching and i will see you next time